why not set up in this part of the world? It's, uh, it has the people, has the, the resources here, um, and it's a, a great place to live and work. Today was very important for a number of reasons. It's the, the biggest of the conferences that we've ever held. Um, it means that we've had international speakers. Uh, we've also had some local speakers right the way across the, the type of interest that we've got in the Southern North Sea. It's a very clear demonstration of the capability of the companies within this region. Um, it's a business networking event predominantly, and so there's a lot of opportunity to talk to <laughs> companies that would give contracts in the longer term. Um, it's also to understand the more strategic elements of where the business is going to be, what resources we need to do, and how we're going to fit into that supply chain within this region. The East of England Energy Group has been a powerhouse to bring people together. It's mobilised people from across the, the, the region. It's also brought the different parts of the industry together in a way that doesn't isn't replicated so strongly elsewhere. And that clustering, bringing people together with a common purpose to make sure we've got a skills flow, is what we're really, really happy to support. And I think the opportunity is there for the taking. We have to broaden our horizons. You know, we have to go and work in the Netherlands. We have to work in Germany. It's part of our, our doorstep is maybe a little bit bigger. And I think people need to, local companies who are maybe slightly smaller and further down the supply chain need to maybe work a little bit harder to get out there and, and, and tell people what we have here and how good we are. I think Eager is a great vehicle to do that and, and, and people who are not members should be encouraged to join because certainly we get a lot of value out of it. Well our, our focus is on a, on a worldwide basis when it comes to where we ply our trade you know we but we do that with the people who have the expertise and they are from this part of the world you know we have that 47 years of experience in uh, in the southern sector in oil and gas and we're exporting that into offshore wind so why not set up in this part of the world through looking very hard at the fields we've got we've managed to convince ourselves that uh, uh, yes we can get more gas out of the existing fields uh, we can lower the costs which allows us to run the fields for longer but in doing so if we're running them for longer we have to spend some money on the aging facilities to get them to a point where we can operate them safely and reliably. With the, the, the capital investments for those projects, uh, um, uh, a lot of that work will be done on site, for example at Bacton. There will be, uh, there will be jobs associated with it and certainly um, a continuation for uh, uh, the current workforce, uh, not only for Shell but uh, our contractor community. The figures we've gathered are that there could be something like 170,000 job opportunities created in offshore wind alone um, in the southern sector between now and 2020. I, I think there are a couple of areas that we need to work hard on. One is finance. Um, we need to get the banks to open up. We need to encourage the government to help us in that department. Um, and, and the government and local, local uh, authorities can help us too in finding the people. So we need to work hard on, on finance and, and the people. I mean, if we're gonna get 170,000 people into the offshore wind industry, they're not going to come from oil and gas as a whole because oil and gas are going to also be needing people. But I think that you know wherever there's a will, there's a way. And certainly, if CJACs have, have, have taken that approach, then we'd like to encourage other companies in the supply chain to do the same. This year, the oil and gas industry in total is likely to spend just under $600 billion worldwide on its exploration and production activities. Of that, around in the next five years, $200 billion is going to be in deep water. So the offshore industry is of fundamental importance. It's of fundamental importance because conventional oil production is declining very dramatically. And really, the way ahead is more and more offshore and that's going to mean more, more and more deeper waters more and more technical challenges and indeed we have such a wealth of expertise in this region that is already exporting considerable amounts of goods and services to the offshore industry across the world the only way is up <laughs>